Hi folks, and welcome back to another video from the folks here at Power Pivot Pro. I'm Reed Havens, and I'm a principal consultant with Power Pivot Pro, as well as founder and owner of Havens Consulting. And I'm here today to walk you through a really cool feature that I've learned how to implement in Power BI Desktop. Now what I want to show you is a great way to use background colors to add a bit of visual discernment between the objects, the backgrounds, and everything else on the page, just to make it a little bit more um, aesthetically pleasing, as one might say. So let's go ahead and start with that. So what we have in front of us right now is a report. Pretty well designed already. It's using a template that I've talked about in other videos here, including that top five Power BI practices that I will link to in the, um, in the description. Um, but yeah, it, it looks fairly cleaned up. It's already has a lot of design practices applied to it, but let's just go ahead and make it a little bit better. So to start with, on any Power BI report, just make sure you've clicked off of all of the visualizations that you have in front of you. And if you do that and go over to the Format Painter here on the right, and if you open up Page Background, you'll see an option to add an image. Now what I've done is I've created a gradient background image, which I've really liked to use. It creates this nice little like color flow on the page. Um, I'll talk about at the end of the video how I made these, but for now, Let's go ahead and just, with any image that you have, we can import, uh, bring that in and import it. So I'm gonna double click, and that added it to my page. Now a good important note to, th uh, to do as well is you wanna make sure that it fits to the screen. So normal right now is it's spilling off uh, over in the background and you're not actually seeing all of it. So I want to change that from normal to fit. Perfect. Now you might notice some things here like it's, uh, it's already added a bit of a um, little bit of that, that visual discernment that I mentioned, but I wanted to polish it up a bit more. And I want to use this background to complement all of the visuals that are on here, but I don't want the visuals to be overwhelmed by the color that's in the background. So to start with, I want to add actually a background to each single object, so that way they stand out a little bit and that the, the bars aren't directly attached to the background. And even better is that background on each visual will add a little bit of um, framing around them as well, and just help that a little bit more. So I'm gonna go up to my total sales card up here at the top. I'm gonna go over to that paint roller here on the right, and I'm gonna turn on background. Now what that does is that's gonna by default turn on background to white and 50%. Now I want it to color in a little bit more, so I'm gonna change that transparency from 50 to 30. There we are. And I'm gonna turn off border. Well, let's just take a quick look at what this looks like now with it up here. As you can see that it's more of a subtle border. Um, I think it's it's a little bit softer and not quite as intense as having a border, but it still makes sure that the color isn't too intense behind the number and it still adds a nice little frame around it. And it'll get more noticeable as we work our way down to the bottom where the color is darker too. So I'm gonna quickly rinse and repeat this um, on the other two cards using that format painter button. Come up here, go to home, go ahead and uh, pin that, there we are. Format Painter, and then re rinse and repeat two more times. Now unfortunately the Painter, the Format Painter does not include the border, so I'm going to turn that off here, turn that off there, there we are, perfect. And I'm going to rinse and repeat that as well just for total sales, so let's fast forward through that. Beautiful. Now the next thing that I want to do is uh, I want to clean up my matrix uh, table detail a little bit. Now you can kind of see that it has somewhat of a border, but it's not coloring in that on the entire object. So the way around that, so it colors in the entire frame and not just where the, the values are inside of the table, we can actually select the matrix visual, come over again to our paint roller over here, and the only way to turn off background on the table itself is you actually have to go to matrix style and select none. There we go. Now that's going to take off all the formatting and that's going to now let me come down to background, do that same process to 30, set that up right there. Now what I also want to do is get it to look like that minimal style that I really like. So I'm actually going to do a few little tweaks to get the data to kind of separate and pop out a bit more. So instead of going to matrix style, I'm going to go now to grid. I want to turn on horizontal grid right here. So I'm going to check that on. There we go. I usually turn row padding up to about three. All right, there we go. That looks better. Now the horizontal grid color is still pretty light, so I'm gonna use a slightly darker gray to get color that in a bit better. I'm gonna color the outline color just a little bit higher. 
There we go. Now it looks really similar to that table that I had just uh, before I did all this formatting. But as you can see that the background color now completely colors this table in from edge to edge instead of just kind of inside. So that includes the scroll bar, scroll bar and everything else. Now the one reason that I really like the background color plus transparency, notice how the background on the page kind of does a light to dark fade top to bottom. Because there's a slight transparency in that background color, it is also kind of going through and, and pulling through just a little bit of that color fade in the visual as well. So it kind of keeps them in alignment and I, I find that that's really useful. Now on these last two visuals, I'm just gonna do that same uh, background color application as well. Just a rinse and repeat process. Perfect. Now the last trick that I wanna to apply to this so over on our left, what we have is all of our slicers, and I've, I've tried to figure out ways to, to create um, backgrounds for those and have those also kind of um, have the, the, the visual discernment with the colors. Um, and I've never found anything that worked really well to color them in, in, color them in individually. However, I have found that um, creating a frame around all of them works really well, and there's a great trick for doing this. So um, kind of watch with me through this and we'll figure out a way to add kind of a box to put all of our slicers in. So I'm gonna navigate up to the top up here for text box. I'm gonna select that. Perfect. Now what I'm gonna do, now if you haven't already turned this on, you, you might notice that my objects are kind of snapping around. It's great to do easy alignment this way. That's found, by, by the way, by going up to view, making sure snap objects to grids turned on. So I'm gonna align that up over here Make sure it's aligned with this. Just frame it just about so. Bring that down, perfect. Now, the text box settings over here on the right, background, turn that on. Turn that as well to 30%, there we go. Okay, now come down to title. I'm going to call this filters. Left align, kick that text up to 12. Background color blue, font color white, just like my other titles. And now the last thing too, so this doesn't accidentally show on front of all of these. Let's go to home, or sorry, format, send to back, select off of that. There we go. It creates kind of a little box that holds all of our slicers in it. Now a good thing just to make sure that they don't accidentally click the box, notice how all of my uh, slicers are border to border. So including the little divider sections in here. So there's no way for them to really, unless you click on the, the header here, there's no way once this is published for them to accidentally click on the, um, the text box and then bring that to the active front selection pane. So it, um, this will kind of help lock it in just to make sure that these are all covered down, including even like this slicer at the bottom. Even though I could have it this size, I intentionally um, resize it down all the way to the bottom so it covers that entire text box. So it just the functionality will work a little bit better once published. And there you have it, a nice little trick that uh, really I think adds a great uh, bit of visual flair to the report. Doesn't take that much, but uh, the combination of a background color uh, with that gradient that I like, plus coloring in the objects individually provides this really nice framing that helps identify where the objects start and end and just makes that look a bit more like a presentation or something else that you would find on a PowerPoint um, and just adds that nice extra layer of polish. Now that's it for this section. As I said, I will finish off this video um, by showing you exactly how I made that gradients. So I'll see you uh, in PowerPoint just in a second. Like I said, I wanted to finish this video with showing you how I made this background. So it's something that I actually did, um, getting an idea from another colleague uh, using PowerPoint. So PowerPoint as a feature, if you actually go to any page here, under design, there is a section in format background which lets you set a gradient fill. And that's what I've actually done. In this file, I'll be providing to you uh, with the report example as well for this video, where I've created a gradient background kind of that goes from like a light white down to a middle to dark color from slate gray to blue and all of these in here. So really any one of these. Now ideally what you could do is save this directly from, uh, from PowerPoint just as an image file, uh, but I found that the resolution is fairly low. So I actually use a tool called Jing, um, which you can just Google and download, that's J-I-N-G. And if you click on capture, 
that lets you kind of take a really nice, completely lossless, um, no compression screenshot. And in my case, since I have a nicely, high, a nice and high resolution monitor, it'll, it'll, it will allow me to take this screenshot, capture the image, and then save that as a gradient background or whatever that is. So it's a really nice way to get that kind of effect since there is no gradient background option in Power BI itself, but then this can be saved as an image and then imported. All right, with that being said, thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in our next one.